this is how you handle exceptions in your application. But this is not an efficient way of handling those errors. So in this video, I'm going to list out all the possible approaches you could have taken and the problems with them. And finally, explain the efficient solution which counters all of those problems. So what is wrong with this function? This is an asynchronous function which returns user and the HTTP call is wrapped in try and catch block. Then a request is sent to the server which responds to us with a status code if it's 200 which means it's okay then it returns the user model otherwise it just throws some unexpected error. This throw message is received in this catch block which again throws the exception that's received. This function is then called in the UI file where we want to display the username and when we restart the application we get unhandled exception. Why do we get this? The reason for that is we have thrown the exception from this get request to wherever this function is called. So to resolve this error, we simply need to wrap this call in the try and catch block, take all of this above and put it in the try block and in the catch block, we'll again set state and set text equal to whatever error is there. After again restarting the application, we don't get unhandled exception. Instead, the error shows up on the device screen. Imagine doing this for hundreds and thousands of functions. It's quite easy to forget to put try and catch block. Sometimes it's not even necessary because the exception is handled here itself. The root of this problem is this part right here, the function signature. The function signature doesn't specify if we need to handle error or not. So to fix that, we can use the tuple package and then here add tuple2. Tuple allows us to store multiple data types or multiple values in a single variable. Since our function cannot return two values, we will use tuple to encapsulate both of those values. So here we just need to pass in the two data types that we return from this function. First is a string because in case of failure, we will pass in a string and in case of success, we have user. Now we just need to enclose this in the tuple to data type. The first item is a string and we need to display a string only if there is an error. So this can be of the type string nullable because we don't have an error when the status code is 200. So here we can pass in null and the item 2 which is the user model can be this user dot from json. In the catch block though we will have return tuple2 with the first item being e.2 string because that's the error we want to display and item 2 will be null. So we'll also make user a nullable return data type. Then we can save it. The reason we have not mentioned return tuple2 over here is because if we throw this it will ultimately come in this catch block. And this catch block will just display that as it is. In our UI file, we will check first if the result dot item one, item one stands for the failure part, which means a string. So if it is not equal to null, it means it's a failure because string is not null. So here we will do set state and put text as res dot item one, which is not nullable. If item one is not null, then we will set state and put text as res dot item two dot name. Then we can remove the try and catch block, which is not necessary anymore. And when we restart the application, we don't get any exception and here the error shows up as it is. The problem with this approach is Again, imagining if there are thousands of functions, it's very inconvenient to write is not equal to null for every item that's there. And it's also quite easy to forget it. Third approach can be to create a new file then. So we'll just create error handle dot dot file and here create a class called error handle. This will contain two values, error and success. This is dynamic instead of a user model. The reason for that is this class is going to be reusable. So it's not just going to fetch data from the user. If you're developing an e-commerce website, this can also be a product model or a rating model. It can be anything. That's why it's dynamic. Now we can just create a constructor for these fields and in the error controller, instead of returning a tuple, you can just return error handle. And here we'll just return error handle for the error message. This is going to be null. So even in the error handle, we are going to have string nullable and success will be user model from JSON response dot body. And here we are going to return error handle error as e dot two string and success as null. In main dot dot file now, instead of having response dot item one, we'll have response dot error and this will be response dot error. Otherwise, we'll just take success and it doesn't identify the name property because it's dynamic. So you can use as user which then gives us access to the name property. Then we can restart the app. We don't get any exceptions 
and the error message shows up. This approach has two problems. First is the use of dynamic. I would always recommend to not use dynamic for any data type unless it's really necessary. And the second problem is again having those if conditions. It's quite easy to forget. And in fact, it's a lot of code to write as well. So what is the efficient solution for this? To avoid this pain, you can use fpdart or dartz package, which is available on pub.dev. After installing it, all you need to do is mention here the data type which can be either. So this can either be a string or a user. And we don't have to mention it as nullable. This basically means we are either going to return a string or a user from this function. So in case of success, we are going to return write. We need to return user. So if you even type to mention a string, it will give you an error. So we just need to pass in user dot from JSON response dot body. But in case of error, we just need to return left. Left stands for failure. And here, if you try to pass in a user model, you'll get an error because here we need to pass in the string, whatever is mentioned over here. This will just be e dot to string. To resolve the issues, we can go to the UI file and this is not needed anymore. All you need to do is check the data type of response which is either string or user and having either in the return data type will provide us with a method called fold. With fold, we can handle what to do in case of failure, which is contained in L and what to do in case of success, which is contained in the variable R. So in case of L, I just want text to be equal to L and in case of R, I want text equal to R dot name and just set state so that the build function rebuilds. Then we can restart the app. We don't get any error. This counters all of our problems we've had. It mentions the data type. So we know we need to handle this exception. It provides us with methods to handle both of these errors, which is pretty quick for us. But the only problem we'll have is continuously writing this part again and again. So if we use this line for like thousands of functions, which we will, and then we realize we just want to change class of this one variable, which is the failure part because we can replace place it with our custom class which is what is usually done in case of displaying failures because it's not just an error message it can be the stack trace and multiple other things as well so what we can do is create type definition over here which can be called either user which will be equal to whatever we are returning over here now we can just take this type definition and put it over here and if you hover over this the function signature remains the same but if we want to change something, for example, just swap the success and the failure class with each other, you can see this reflects and now we can make the changes necessary. So in case of success, we'll return a string and in case of failure, we're going to return a user model and here respectively change those values. But you'll say this approach is only valid when we won't want to have success as a user model, but no you can make slight changes and this can change. For example, here add the generic type T and here mention it as t. So now whenever you use either user, you can mention the type, we will pass in user and this works successfully. Whatever we pass in the generics, it will just assign it to the success class. So if I just want the success class to be a string as well, I can have that. And here when returning right, I just want a string to be present. There's much, much more you can do with the FP dart package. I'm just going to show you some of the functions you can have and multiple more resources will be linked in the description below. Check them out. So in the main, in the UI file, if you just want to handle the success part, you can do response.fold write and it will allow you to handle the success. In case of handling only the failure, you can just do fold left. If you directly want to get the value without folding, you can do get left and get right. If you want to check if it's a failure, then you can call is left. Otherwise, you can just call is right. And if you want to swap the values like we did previously, you can call the swap method. So this is it for the tutorial. If you want to know more about such efficient techniques or guides on a certain topic or project, make sure to subscribe the channel. Thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial.